evening and congratulations to the class of 2020 on your graduation. I'd like to thank the students of 2020, the center school community, parents, family members, and our community partnerships for being a part of this celebration. It is an honor to be here to welcome you, to congratulate you, to have been your principal for the past four years. It has been my pleasure and my honor. You are graduating in surreal times, times of a pandemic and protest. But what I'd like you to know, class of 2020, is that even though we are creating a new norm of our society, you are the collective voices of activism. It is your generation that is stepping out and setting the table for the American dream. It is your beliefs and your social activism that is creating change in what we call our American society. You are the beliefs, you are the social activists, you are the class that will bring a new America to the table. You are the class who will bring a new dream to our beliefs, to what we hold dear as a, an America that is equitable, both racially, ethnically, and to a dream that is accessible to all Americans. You are the hope. You are the belief. You are the dream. And as I stand here congratulating you, I want you to know that I believe in you. I believe in you and I know for surety that you will be not only the dreamers, but you will be the activists in making a truly great America that is open and free and accessible for all Americans. Americans who are black and brown and every, who represent every ethnicity, who represent every culture, you will be a part of the American voice in bringing equality to all and America to all. You are the voice, you are the next generation. So go forth, class of 2020, and go for it. I believe in you, I support you, and most of all, I truly, truly love and adore you. Congratulations to the class of 2020. I'm Denise Juno, Seattle Public School Superintendent. When I was a young girl growing up on the Blackfeet Indian Reservation in Montana, I would never have dreamed my path would lead to Seattle Public Schools. My story takes me from Head Start to Harvard. I've had the opportunity to lead public education for the state of Montana. And I was the first American Indian woman elected to a statewide executive office anywhere in the country. I'm also a proud product of public education. It was my community and my education in public schools that set me up to take advantage of opportunities that have come my way. And I've learned a lot along my journey. As you take this next big step, here are some tips for the road. Breaking news, adults don't have it all figured out. We just act like we do. So embrace uncertainty and know that learning never ends. It's okay to fail. In fact, it's better than okay. It is necessary to create new and innovative solutions. And that's something we really need right now as a nation and global community. And if you have a good idea, act on it. Don't wait. Trust yourself. The world needs your brilliance. You are such a special class of young people because you have already proven that you can roll with the punches, that you can thrive even in the middle of a global pandemic. You have demonstrated that you have the will and skill to get through whatever life throws at you. You are ready. And you are already leading by showing up and advocating for change, supporting each other, and doing it with courage and bravery. You have earned this celebration of all of your hard work. I urge you now to take your education and walk through the doors of opportunity as they open to you. Believe in yourself and believe that no dream is out of reach. 
make your voice heard, and take leadership roles wherever you find yourself. The world needs your voice, your skills, your knowledge, and your inspiring stories of success. Graduates, as you receive your diploma, know that all of your fans, your family, friends, and community are also very proud of what you've accomplished. When you succeed, each and every one of us benefits. I congratulate you, Class of 2020. I can't wait to see what you do next. The same alarm wakens my dream On the first day of high school In a classroom I sit and listen To the announcements you were late And I met you in the art room Bree And your Lex weekend reflections New chips and tabs Waiting for you to finish your lab Sign your name here for a pass A wall of vines during mash Clocks with incorrect time Monorail rides A bus to City Hall And to Olympia rubric for a Sound of waves when things fall apart Kite runner and nectar and sieve Reenacting Romeo and Juliet in the time of the butterflies The little Chinese seamstress like water for chocolate A raisin in the sun and a streetcar named Desire Then the emperor was divine The vague things they carried Just mercy soon next decade A Polaroid picture of dancing at a Halloween party When to the fair in that day and watched a horror movie In that evening you took out your phone And posted this memory on Snapchat Created an Instagram and shared your TikToks I kept the rose from prom Pressed between my textbooks When we say goodbye we know We'll meet again the center We are power we're inspired by the class of 2020. This poem is titled Buddhist Funeral. I used to want to be cremated like a Buddhist funeral. I wanted to disappear and for nobody to see me. To see the horrors of living from childhood trauma and self-hate I kept in bathroom mirror therapy. But as I look at myself, as I look at myself, I am not ashamed of my body. I don't want to be cremated anymore. I want my body to hang from gravity, pulling my arms down and legs down and stomach down. I want my body to hang from gravity for you to see, to see all my scars and scabs and bruises, to see all the things I kept hidden when I was alive. I don't want to disappear in oven and smoke and ash. I want my arms to be framed in wooden cases in my living room to say, look, look at what life I lived. Look at what life I lived. I am not ashamed anymore. I am not ashamed of my scars and of my body. I am not ashamed of my body. I am not ashamed of my body. Thank you to all of the staff members, parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, siblings, family members, and members of the district that are tuning in today. Graduating virtually is a strange experience, but having you all here helps to make it feel a little bit more normal. As a content warning, I will be bringing up names of black people killed by state violence. If you are black and don't want to hear those names right now, I will give a wave to the camera when I'm done speaking them. We are graduating in what we may look back on as one of the most tumultuous, painful periods of our lives and our community's lives. I'm finishing writing this speech on June 1st, and by the time you are hearing this, it will have been nearly two weeks since the murder of Tony McDade, three since that of George Floyd, over a month since that of Breonna Taylor, 
nearly four years since that of Philando Castile, five since that of Sandra Bland, and eight since that of Trayvon Martin. I will echo the sentiment that I have heard by many black people both in and outside of this community and asking that both myself and my white peers not let this weekend end as a trend or a single moment in history. As we are watching this in two weeks, I ask myself and my peers, specifically my white peers, if our actions are holding up to that request. I feel safe in saying that none of us have in the past four years. I hope that this moment where I have seen so many of us come back together to talk and act after being isolated for so long does not end as a moment. Given that for the past two or three months we have been pulled apart as a class, I would like to take this time to reflect on some of the things that have brought us together. One of the beautiful and sometimes annoying things about Center is that its size makes those shared experiences plentiful. So for each year of our time at Center, I have chosen uh, some experiences and selected an object that I feel best symbolizes those experiences in that year. For our freshman year, I've chosen the humble Dick's Milkshake to represent our first time realizing that we could get to Dick's and back before our fifth and sixth periods. I think this encapsulates our freshman year well, which more than any one class or event was defined by firsts. Our first time meeting each other, our first time sitting and making art together, our first time getting yelled at by an upperclassman, our first time getting in an argument over whether going straight or turning right at Third and Vine is faster on our way to school. It was also our first spirit week and importantly, our first time talking to a slime-based Instagram celebrity. In our sophomore year, we began to break out of our shells, the object for this year, and start to get more involved. We became even more emboldened to play with slime in class started joining MUN, theater kids got eaten by carnivorous plants, we spent Saturday and Sunday mornings summoning mountains with OEE, and we put on our first successful school dance as an ASB. We also dealt with tragedy that year in the loss of a treasured leader of our community, Molly Pritchard. The People of Color Alliance's MLK Day Assembly was threatened and flooded with hate. The year was incredibly difficult for many members of our class and moving into our junior year was a struggle for many. And by the time we had hit junior year, we had heard enough by upperclassmen to know that it was gonna be tough. Our shared experience of grinding through junior year humanities, finishing our IARPs, putting on all of our decades day and taking the SAT were to put it lightly, gnarly. We shared Snowpocalypse, a break from school that was not too long. We got to know new members of our class and we shared the experience of having wonderful exchange students in our school. However, what I firmly believe is the most bonding and formative event of our high school year, more than slime, decades days, or center field days could ever hope to be, was the collective experience of seeing and smelling the ramp poop and it bonded us together in a way that nothing else ever could, and so it is our object for this year. For this year, our final year at the Center School, I would like to propose a far more practical object, the sticky note. In our senior year, we have learned to refine our academic and organizational skills, and we have used them to take political action and to check off all of the boxes required to graduate. It represents the organizational skills that we developed and utilized to give unified testimony across 45 students divided into multiple groups at City Hall in the fall. And it represents how we use those skills again more recently to travel to Olympia with Mr. Greenberg and staff to advocate for the issues and policies that mattered most to us. In March, however, this was disrupted. With the rise of COVID-19, we had to pull apart and break, and break bonds far earlier than we normally would have needed to. This was and is, of course, for a good purpose, protecting those very communities. But what I hope that we can all still remember is that over the past four years, we have built the tools to be both personally and politically organized. It is time for us to go out into the world and use those skills to develop larger personal lives and contribute to our larger communities. If you have made it to this point, which you have because you are watching this stream, then you no longer have reason to doubt yourself and your ability to do that. We have checked off all of the boxes, finished all of the projects, 
read or spark notes to all of the books, and we have done all of our grad recs. Class of 2020, it is time for us to leave the center school. Thank you. Hello, seniors. Uh, this is Doug, and I guess at first I want to, well, I want to congratulate the seniors of 2020. Um, and, and thank you for allowing me to give a few words of wisdom, if you will, upon your graduation. And I tell you, what a year it has been, huh? <laughs> uh, and in a, in a way, you've been given a taste of what the world is ready to give to you. And, and again, I just, I can't tell you how proud I am of you. Um, it, uh, I've been there kind of from the beginning. I mean, the entire year watching you learn and, and ask questions. And, and before I go any further, this is be kind of a unique keynote because I've been asked to do a song, um, by someone, um, his name rhymes with John Greenberg. <laughs> No, but it's all good. I'm honored and I, I'll, I'll do a song and I, I just am blessed that I've been asked to do this. So I'm going to keep my words fairly brief so others will have ample time to, you know, contribute to this wonderful celebration. But as stated before, uh, this past year has really kind of given you a glimpse into the future of what life will look like as you enter the adult phase of your, of your journey. But the good news is uh, you are certainly prepared. Like I said, I've, I've been there with you in the beginning, the, uh, the beginning of the school year. I have no doubt that uh, you have what it takes to contribute to the greater good of society, and that's important. And you might ask why, um, because like I said, seeing you learn, watching you learn, you know, you've questioned authority when it needed to be questioned. And, you know, one of the biz biggest examples I've seen is, um, you know, taking your questions to City Hall and questioning local government and telling them that there are things about the system that are broken and that need to be fixed. You know, that that is a special thing. And I told you when you did it, there are there are adults that I know that can't do that. And the fact that you are young and that you are taking the bull by the horns and basically demanding social change and and. And as I give this speech, you know, you can turn on your television and see evidence of that daily for the last couple of weeks. We've seen it. And um, and so but but what you have done and the bravery that you've shown, what you've already done as teenagers, as you leave, as you leave center school. I, and I've seen this. You've already given a voice to the voiceless. You've helped those who cannot help themselves. And you've already fought for those who cannot fight. And, and something that's, that's very important, and I've said this to you before, and I'll, I'll say it again. If you don't learn anything from me, take, take this one phrase with you as, you as you move forward. And this is important. You never learn what you don't want to know. And I'll say that one more time. You never learn what you don't want to know. And so in a way, your education starts, well, today, the moment you graduate, that's when it really starts because you'll have the opportunity to put in the motion everything that you learned. And, um, and I, I get, again, I just can't be more proud of what you've done. You guys have embraced me every single day uh, and... I, I just I just can't be more proud. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And so before we get to the song, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Douglas Demiso Frazier, and I, along with the class of 2020, approve this message. <laughs> and thank you once again, seniors. I love you so much. And now all I can say is enjoy the music. Shady heart Never knows Just 
where to start Speaking to the lonely talk While she walks her journey walk
On behalf of all seven of the school board directors and with the authority vested in me as your school board president, I accept the students before me as 2020 graduates of the Center School. Congratulations. We are so proud of all that you have accomplished. Thank you.